here. <laughs> and he survived. <laughs> and now he's in Carlton, he's the second postdoc uh, working with uh, Thomas Dubois. And, uh, so he's uh, going to talk about mirror Dirac leptogenesis. So thank you. I go this way. Yes. So thank you, Rogerio and Mariano, for organizing this nice event and for the invitation. So today, I would like to talk about this work done in collaboration with uh, these three gentlemen, Thomas Bleguar from Carton, and also Kevin is a, a PhD student there, was a PhD student, now he's a postdoc in uh, Poland, and uh, Sheng Fong, that is from uh, Sao Paulo here, is a professor at uh, UFA, UFABC. Okay. So in this work, we consider a model based on a mirror world that provides a unified picture of Dirac neutrinos, leptogenesis, and possible dark matter. This was investigated by Gu the first time in 2012. <clears throat> so what we did, we extended his work by studying in detail the leptogenesis mechanism in this uh, kind of model by constructing the Boltzmann equation, solving the Boltzmann equation, including Z2 breaking effect and also flavor effect. Maybe in, uh, Along the talk, it will be clear what are this Z2, what is this Z2 symmetry. So, let me first uh, start by introducing a bit the concept of mirror world models. So, so the existence of a mirror world is something like you can imagine for each standard model particle, there is a twin particle in this mirror sector. So there is a copy of the standard model sector belonging to this mirror sector. And also there is, for each standard model coupling, there is a relative mirror or twin coupling in the, in the mirror sector. So this kind of... Do you need to duplicate the whole standard model? It's not necessary, so it's not necessary. So, uh, yes, it's not necessary. In, in, our, so in our model, we don't really make any uh, strong assumptions on this, so we don't want to really try to build a realistic model because, you know, when you duplicate uh, the number of particles and you start to be, so you really, if you suppose you duplicate exactly the standard model, you start to be in trouble with cosmology, for example, like, I don't know, at, Think about the relativistic degrees of freedom, this delta n effective, right? <coughs> that people measure with. So you have little room. So if you, if you do this, exactly, you start to be in trouble. And then, okay. Sometimes people think of having old sector, sometimes only just a part, so it's really model dependent. But you do want to know any constellation in your, in your. Yeah, so you, you should, yes, you should have. Uh, a minimal for example, one family, one, one generation, one family, generation. one generation. So think about uh, twin X, and then they have this fraternal twin X where they have only the third generation uh, mirror quarks. For, uh, yes, it, third generation mirror part, uh, mirror fairness, uh, mirror part. So this uh, has been wide, uh, widely discussed in the literature. So Apparently, the first notion of mirror particle was introduced by Yang and Lee in the 56. Okay, because they want to restore this parity symmetry of the, of the weak interaction. So maybe there exists a mirror particle that has belong. They don't say they don't use mirror world, but they 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 point to the existence of may, they speculate about maybe they exist a. a a twin or mirror particle, so in the end you can restore this, this parity symmetry in weak interaction. Then uh, the first study of pos possible experimental observation was done by Kobzarev in 66. So this is 
a small list is, is incomplete, so I apologize for not being able to provide a full complete list, but I guess just to highlight uh, to sketch them. The most important, I don't know, the, the most relevant steps. Uh, so the first person experimental observation was done about COBS that have 66. Uh, by the way, this paper, uh, if you if you look at uh, on Inspire, so I cannot find, <laughs> I could not find the, the 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 reference. Maybe there is in some Russia repository. I don't know. And astronomical effects also of this mirror world by blinning of a clock of 83. So this, even if it is, you are not able to find, you will be reminded by this guy through an automatic email. There is some. So I guess uh, I don't know if everyone experienced <laughs> an email. So, uh, so at the beginning, I forgot to <laughs> to cite him. So that's why. And then okay, then. Uh, this concept was invoked a bit later in the 90s, basically to the, was a, as a possible explanation to solve the solar neutrino puzzle. Sejanovic and Berezani Moapatra in the 90s. Then uh, uh, studies about, uh, so to explain uh, the observed, uh, or observed some machos by Moapatra and type is in, always in 99, so they were trying to explain this as made of mirror particles. Then cosmological consequence of mirror sector was studied by Bereziani Moapatra in 95 and also Bereziani, so this gentleman done a lot of work on this. Then in the early 2000, so Twinix model came out, this to address the hierarchy problem, and also in Twinix you need uh, a mirror world by Tsako et al. And then a symmetric dark matter leptogenesis in this kind of model by Moapatra et al. in 2009. So there is a wide literature, so it's only a short, uh, a short list, so there are, there are more references. Can you remind me why those uh, twinic models uh, solve the hierarchy? So because, okay, is a, so the X in that case is a pseudo, number Goldstone boson of a big, or, some, or somehow of a symmetry, that is SU4, that contains two SU2. Okay. Uh -huh. And then uh, the quadratic divergences, you can see that they, since the, the symmetry is, is respected, so when the, the quadratic divergences are, are, not, are not present. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, so after this mirror world excursion, let me speak a bit about the standard leptogenesis paradigm. So, so leptogenesis <coughs> is a, a simple and elegant explanation of the baryon asymmetry in connection to the neutrino properties and was put out in the 80s by Fukujita and Ajita. So basically what you do, you write your heavy right-handed neutrino and you couple it as usual with uh, Yukawa interaction with the X, and also you give it a Majorana mass. Then the idea that in the early universe, this, uh, this heavy neutrino decays, and, in, and its, de uh, its decay violates lepton number and CP. So the way to see this, you have to, you can write that, you write down the three level graph, for example, for is decaying to lepton and X, and then you have to do the interference. So when you consider the interference with one loop diagrams, like this one, you see that the decay of N into LH and the decay of L of N into L bar H bar, so they are not the same. In fact, you can compute this uh, CP violating parameter epsilon i. So when you have the, the decay of n into LH and the decay of n into L bar H bar, so the difference divided by the sum. And this is 
this is not zero, uh, and this is proportional to the imaginary part of the fourth power of the Yukawa coupling. So when you do the complete complete and there are time some function, the functions are function of the masses of the external particle that is decaying. The, uh, the, uh, so the ratio between the particle in the loop, the, the massive neutrino in the loop, and the, and the uh, external particle. So in the here you, you think of having more than one, where i is bigger than one. So you can, you can think of having three heavy right and neutrino. So, you know. uh, so then uh, the idea is that uh, you generate, so this process violates the conservation of L violates the, actually the conservation of B minus L. So you generate a B minus L asymmetry that throughout this talk I will call it by delta. So delta is, uh, is uh, the B minus L asymmetry, okay? And uh, then you can generate a barium asymmetry through the spiral process that is usually parameterized like K times uh, this uh, uh, by B minus L asymmetry. So the barium asymmetry is a, a factor, usually of order one, one third, I don't know, times uh, uh, the B minus L asymmetry. And this B minus L asymmetry, this, so let me, let me call it delta, so this delta asymmetry is proportional to some efficiency times this epsilon i, with epsilon i is this CP and L violating, also L violating parameters. So. Uh, okay, so the letter analysis is very nice because uh, it relates the generation of the lepton asymmetry to the neutrino masses. Because now you recognize that the same Lagrange is the, same, is the Lagrange that is responsible for, for example, Taiwan CISO mechanism, right? So, and suppose you integrate out those heavy guys, then you generate an effective neutrino mass of this form. So the, <coughs> once the X, you generate the Weimer operator, right? And then uh, when the X takes a valve, you get this mass. So and it's proportional to B squared, the level of the X, Yukawa square, and over the mass of these, uh, these heavy guys. Uh, then, we, then we, we know that this can be diagonalized by this unitary transformation. And uh, so in this case, so I, I forgot to say that here we, we always sum over alpha, so we sum over all uh, lepton flavor in the final state. So we got what is called uh, unflavored parameter. So because in this case, in this simplified case, we are not able to distinguish among flavors. So, so in this case, we got this parameter. And this parameter is possible to obtain a bound uh, that was uh, derived by Davison and Ibarra in this hierarchical limit. When, so as I said, suppose we have three right-handed neutrinos, one, two, three. So the, the one is much, much, much smaller than the other two. Okay, all three are very heavy, so, but one is much smaller than the other. The other, then you can parameterize your Yukawa in terms of this uh, neutrino mixing UPMNS matrix. Then the, this is a matrix with the eigenvalues of the, the, the small neutrino masses. A rotation matrix, and this is uh, a, a matrix, diagonal matrix with the eigenvalue of this. Uh, having right neutrino masses, and you can do, you can substitute this expression into the, your expression of epsilon, and work out some math, and then you get this kind of bound. So the CP, the, the absolute value of the CP, CP violation, violating parameter can be bigger than this quantity proportional to M1, and inversely proportional to the valve, and proportional to, to, to the neutrino to the neutrino masses. So is the square root, so is it the diagonal matrix where you have the square roots of the eigenvalues of the small neutrino masses, yeah. You can parameterize this in this way. 
You can see this. If you substitute this there, then you, you will get an RS and orthogonal, orthogonal method. And then, okay, you work out and you work out this inequality. Uh, it was derived by Davidson and Ibarra. And then you see from here that since, uh, so in the case where you have a hierarchical neutrino spec spectrum, uh, so the baryon asymmetry, as I said, is something like is, 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 a, is a factor times the V by non cell asymmetry. So that you, but then in the end, the V by non cell asymmetry, asymmetry depends on efficiency and deception of parameters. So you can write something like this YB is order 10 to the minus 2 epsilon times zeta. And then uh, if you substitute, if you put epsilon to so this inequality here, then you get that M has to be one has to be bigger than to have successful lectogenesis. Then you generate B minus L, then you generate B plus final to have successful lectogenesis, M1 is to be bigger than 10 to the 9 over eta. So is a something that we know is a very high scale. So the, yeah, maybe, maybe you can see it uh, here. So for example, usually what you, what you do, you compare like the, you compare, right? So you compare the gamma, the decay rate. Gamma is the decay rate with the upper rate, right? And this is called, is K1, called K1. This is uh, like uh, uh, the, um, it's called also washout factor. This. So, so out of equilibrium, you don't want this to be bigger than, bigger than one, right? So, and here, people have studied the, uh, from, this, from this paper of Blanchet Dibar, they've studied the, the Boltzmann equations, and they have studied uh, the efficiency. Now we are, okay, they, I use the, the uh, since I took the plot from them, this is their notation. So this is the efficiency as a function of this K1 parameter. So that wash out or the measure out of equilibrium, you no? Know? And then they start with initial thermal abundance is this curve, or with zero initial abundance is the other curve. So somehow, yes, you see, uh, you want this to be of order one, basically, to have the maximum efficiency to have the maximum efficiency, for example, for the for the zero initial abundance, this is somehow yes between uh, one and, and ten, something like this, right? And uh, and instead for having when you have thermal initial abundance, so your efficiency can also be one when this is very small. That's something you, know, you can so when you are very, so this is, this game, gamma one is much smaller than, than eight, so you think to be out of equilibrium, and for the term initial abundance, you have almost one efficiency. When this, this starts to become bigger, then the efficiency drops. And this doesn't mean, so when you have, where you are along this curve, you have to take one point, and then to see if you can have, uh, uh, if you can, does it, does it mean that all these points reproduce a successful leptogenesis? Because it gives you an efficiency, this, you have to plug it in the formula back and see if you can get the same observed uh, YB. It's not, it's not guaranteed. This. So it was the efficiency uh, factor. The efficiency factor. Okay. So they depended both on efficiency and epsilon one, right? And epsilon one, sorry. So you can play, you can play, but then, okay. Then the thing is, suppose, suppose you fix this, you fix this, then basically you fix, uh, and you fix epsilon. Then epsilon in the formula of before, suppose you put it epsilon equal epsilon max. Then epsilon equal epsilon max it means fixing M1. So when you have fixed M1, you have fixed M1 that enters in this formula. And then you have to fix another parameter that is the Yukawa. No? And then, then you have to be careful if this Yukawa is not too big, because if this Yukawa is too big, basically naively is bigger than one. Then you have to be careful that maybe scattering processes. So in this case, people solve the, the equation with neglecting scattering processes, but because they say they are subdominant. But this, they are, since the decay is y, 
square, the scattering processes are y to the four, then you have to be careful, but maybe that requirement does not imply that y is bigger than one. In that case, you are not obtaining a successful, a successful result, and you have to reconsider your process. It's very important. 10 to the... 10 to 3 minus n1 equals the order of 0 0.1 of epsilon by 2. This is 0 0.1, yeah. 0 0.1. Then this you can play with, yeah. With the, you can increase m, uh, for yeah, example. So typically 10 to the minus something is something You can have, uh, I don't know, you can, you can play, you see, you can play with m1 to, to, bring, it, to bring it up. But yes, so you see, so let's do this naively, no? Observe 10 to the minus nine, right? So efficiency one, what you need? 10 to the minus seven, right? Yes. Yeah. This is an, uh, it is an assumption that, uh, so having an hierarchy, hierarchical spectrum, and from that those, that bound of from cosmology that we know that the sum has to be smaller. I suppose let's let's take the maximum value. Okay, you know, okay. There is also there there is some because we don't know the absolute yeah. neutrino mass scale, right? So yeah, this is an assumption. These assumptions are the maximal ones that they're in the optimistic scenario because if it's smaller, <laughs> right, yeah, then you have so okay. There's some Boltzmann equation there uh, with, with scattering or without scattering. Without scattering. So it's only the K. The K. But then the They inverse the K, yes. K inverse the K. The K and then there's the K and what yeah. K inverse the K basically. So okay. Uh, so those are the bounds, you know, that you get for N one, no? For N one there's bounds there. Yes, basically you see that they have to be in the thermal initial, yeah, has to, you can it can be bigger. Yeah, they have to be all bigger than 10 to the nine, basically. So it's very high, high scale. Okay, this is a small uh, quick review of, of the leptogenesis mechanism. Now, people came out also with the, the idea of having leptogen because leptogenesis without violating lepton number. And this. Very high scale. 10 to the 8, 10 to the 19. Yes. Yes, at least. And then you have the electrolytic phase. Yeah, then the spalleron goes and then freezes out the electrolytic around the electrolytic phase transition scale, and then, yes. Okay, then people have thought about uh, having leptogen, so some work came out about having leptogenesis without violating lepton number. So leptogenesis can be accomplished with Dirac neutrino. So no lepton violation is needed. But in this case, naively, there is no relation with neutrino masses because you don't have this kind of CISO. Even if, uh, yeah, this was the first paper of Dick in 99, and then Murayama somehow tried to to find a relation, not with the neutrino mass, but with the, the, uh, the, the SUSY breaking scale in this paper. Uh, okay. What is the idea of this? So at, at, at the beginning, so you have baryon number equal to zero, lepton number, so you introduce a right-handed neutrino, but you don't give him a major mass, so you have a Dirac guy, right? Left neutrino and right neutrino, so the beginning, the you can split the lepton number in, for the neutrino, lepton left and lepton right, so at the beginning those are, are zero. Then, the decay, then you have to introduce some heavy scalars, doublets. This is an example they, they, they show in that paper, so. Like uh, heavy Xs, for example. And then they decay into left and right neutrinos. And then what you generate? You generate, or B is always, remains zero, 
Then you generate a, an asymmetry in the left on left that is x and an asymmetry in the left on right that is opposite. But then the idea is that then the sphaleron acts only on those guys, right? The sphaleron does not act on those guys. And then the sphaleron uh, conserves this b minus l, and no, and in this case, the Yukawa coupling, then you have to be, see, the Yukawa coupling of the left and right with the x is so small that you cannot equilibrate this, uh, this process. So the sphaleron does its job and generates a big, uh, a, 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 some small asymmetry in B and the same quantity here in order that B minus L here is conserved. So I, I wrote maybe, I should have written B minus L left because so, so it's a typo, sorry. And then uh, this is untouched by, by the sphaleron. And then at some point, uh, the spiral freezes out, so it's not working anymore. And then the Yukawa equilibration, equilibrate after the spiral at very small scales, so because uh, to give the mass of the neutrino, so Yukawa has to be 10 to the minus 10, something like this, right? And uh, then, uh, so this washes out this X asymmetry, but so we already created a small asymmetry in B, and then in the end we get a small barium some, some barium asymmetry in the end. Okay, so this is the way to um, to generate also to have some leptogenesis without uh, uh, violating lepton number. When you don't get the number, you, you always need to extend somehow. The idea is you always need to extend somehow the glow, the lepton, the usual lepton number. In this case, by adding the right under the neutrino, you somehow introduce a new U1. That is the U1 of the neutrino right. You somehow you extend always the the lepton number. Or you so the, naively you have two ways. Or you slightly break this B minus L or B minus L, or you extend a bit L. So then, now let's, uh, you can combine, for example, now let's go back to the mirror world and see, and see some general neutrino Lagrangian, so of the forms of the, the one we have seen before. So for example, we have two sets of right-handed neutrino, one belonging to our, our world, and one belonging to the mirror world. This is just uh, the classification because in the end, they are both neutral, right? Uh, under everything, right? So this really, but okay. Yeah, because one is connected to the mechanism to give neutrino a mass, and the other is not. Is that correct? No, no, both are. Both are. Well, in this case, you see, now, now I'm writing the most general Lagrange. So I, I consider a. So you're right. mixing the two. And I'm also mixing the two. The two guys. The True. So it's Yukawa, Yukawa coupling. Yeah. yeah. Also the master, yes. You have CISO. So here, you see, then you can write the Majorana master for, let's call it the standard model heavy right under neutrino, the mirror right under neutrino. <coughs> then you can have a Dirac master mixing the two guys. Then you can have all combination of Yukawa or Yukawa coupling. This is the standard one. This is the standard one in the mirror sector. You see, when you replace everything with prime, so prime represents the, the mirror sector particle. And then, but then this guy can also couple with those guys, and then you write another Yukawa, and then this guy can, in principle, this is the most general. And people have studied, uh, Moa Patra et al., have studied this uh, leptogenesis in this context using this Lagrangian, but basically, using a simplified version, basically considering only Majorana masses for the, these guys. Sorry, yes, Majorana masses for, for these guys. No, sorry. Only considering one set of right-handed neutrinos, this Majorana master, and it's coupling to the standard model particle and to the mirror particle. So now this is the minimal 
minimal thing you can minimal thing you can you can think of, right? We have just one set, like three, because this is the distinction between this and mirror already uh, for some convenience. But this you can already distinguish those. Uh, yeah, because they are uh, uh, neutral and under everything, so, okay. But okay, let's to have a, an idea. Okay, instead, in our model, what we want to do? We want to consider, so, it's not a minimal model, so we consider three right-handed neutrinos in our sector, three right-handed neutrinos in the mirror sector, and then we couple them only through this Dirac mass term, so we put to zero, the Majorana mass term. And then we write down this uh, operator, the, the standard operator, and the primed one. Well, basically, when you, you, so you replace everything with the, uh, the field primed, so in the mirror. In this way, you can see that this Lagrangian conserves a lepton number, a total lepton number, this is L minus L prime. So if you, so you can realize that this is conserved. <coughs> when you give uh, to these guys an opposite lepton number than, for example, than the standard model guys. So the total lepton number is, is a global U1 symmetry of our theory. So then the standard model and two identity neutrino form an heavy Dirac state. So an heavy Dirac state is NR of the standard model plus NR prime C of the mirror section. Then the Lagrangian can be written in this way. The Dirac master, this you have interaction in the, in the mirror sector with the NC. Okay. This is what, so just saying, I'm just rewriting the Lagrangian before, basically. And then uh, Z2 symmetry implies that uh, Z2 symmetry is a symmetry when you replace each particle in your world with the mirror particle, then if you replace this with the mirror counterpart, then this Z2 symmetry implies that Y has to be equal to Y prime, for example. For example, in the twin X models, they require the Y top is equal to Y top prime for some uh, uh, for some uh, mechanism to solve the, the, the hierarchy problem there, or, yes, there. But in general, they can, I mean, some studies show that for other, for other quarks, you can have different, you, you, somehow you must have some different you So you have to break a bit this Z2 symmetry. So now, you can see the complete model, model as five U1 symmetry. So let's, let's think like a complete model. Uh, we, we just focus on the neutrino cycle, but consider, let's put for a moment all the other particles in the game. Then we have baryons, leptons, and then the, the U1 symmetries are baryon, baryon prime, L dot, Y, the hypercharge, and hypercharge prime. So I'm also doubling the gauge, uh, uh, the gauge, um, the gauge interaction. Then an anomaly free cancellation is this uh, U1, B minus B prime minus L dot. That is B minus L minus B prime minus L prime. So this is the anomaly. So if you gauge in this group, I I, I'm not gauging this group. You're not gauging. I know. So. so this is one y, this is one prime. No. No. This, okay. This is one anomaly free combination, but these are, these are they are not they are not they are are separately. No. They have to. Then the idea, the initial condition, we have no asymmetry. So B equals zero, or L equals zero, B prime, L prime is equal to zero. Then this heavy neutrino decays, decays, and, and CP violation in decays, so generate an asymmetry in L and L prime of equal magnitude. Uh, because the total lepton number is to be conserved, right? So, gonna, so L minus L prime is zero because this was the, the original total lepton number is conserved. Then the sphaleron 
at the same time comes into play, we have uh, two sphalerons in the, and then they redistribute the asymmetry in B minus L and B prime minus L prime. So we have our electroweak and electroweak prime sphaleron. So as before, the sphaleron generates some B asymmetry and also the, uh, the same amount, increase of the same amount the lepton asymmetry in order that this difference stays the same and also in this case. And then, Yeah, we don't know this, right? So, okay, you don't need, we have, a, this should be around, the, the freezes out around the electrovic scale. About this, uh, maybe you can say, okay, maybe it depends what is the valve of the X, X, X around that scale, for example, I don't know. Then, depend if there is exact Z2 symmetry, you think the same scale, as exact Z2 scale. But now we are entering the model building, and then. Uh, so there are two different spaces yeah. on the scale, no? One for the yeah, Yes. And it is like two isolated systems with uh, temperature, at uh, different temperatures. They are in equilibrium through their interactions. And then, then at some point they, because they this end, they, no? And then at some, yeah, then, and then at some point they, they decouple the, the, the two systems, right? So, then we think always that we have an hierarchical spectrum, so leptogen is dominated by the decay of N1, which has the smaller mass. Then all N decays, then the do sector decouple, and also we have a low energy, the spalleron freezes out, and then B, L, B prime, L prime, they are separately conserved. So we effectively generate uh, some baryon asymmetry. And though, let me, let me try to explain better what's going on. So, so, when, so when then we have to co compute CP violated decays in, of N9 to lepton of flavor alpha is epsilon I alpha. So it's the decay of N9 to L alpha X minus the decay of N bar into L bar alpha phi, phi bar. So this is different from zero because we have CP violation. And the same thing happens in the, in the mirror world. So as, as before, we have these diagrams, but now you realize that here, before we, have, we had a vertex diagram here in the standard representation. Here we have two uh, wave function diagrams, right? So uh, because this diagram is identically zero, Instead, in this case, you can have a mirror particle running, running into this loop. We have standard model particle and also mirror particle. This is the decay of the N into standard model particle. So now you compute the decay of this N. So this, the CPT conservation by the, the total decay width of N I is equal to total decay width of N I bar. N I bar. We call it just gamma N I. And this is given by this. So it's proportional to a three level, a three level. It's proportional to y square plus y prime square. And then if I sum over all flavors, then I get this epsilon i, this unflavored CP violation parameters. And if you, when you sum over all flavors, this is equal, so this is equal to this because of CPT conservation, because of this relation, you can see that this is equal to this. So we computed this, also already we recomputed this actually because GU already computed, but GU came with this formula. We somehow came out with this intermediate formula for its flavor specific CP parameters. Uh, so then you do this computation and you see that it's always proportional to imaginary part of uh, you cover to the four, but in the, then you can have mixed case here for the standard model, for the decay to the standard model particle, you have you cover to the four and a term that is you cover prime square, you cover square. And in the, in the middle sector, you have you cover prime to the four and you cover prime square, you cover square. 
then when you sum over alpha, these terms go to zero, and then you remain with these terms, and as you, as we were saying before, these two have to be equal, these two epsilon, basically epsilon and epsilon prime have to be equal, and this is the formula. It's a function of xk, where xk is mk squared divided mi, mi squared. Okay. No, I'm not assuming anything right now, right? This is general. Okay. This is general. Then if you, yes, if you want to, if you assume Z2, then you can just sum it up and everything. Otherwise, yeah, this is general. Now, now you can integrate out this heavy Dirac guy we constructed before, and then you, have, you are having a generalized Weinberg operator when you have Lx, but then L prime, x prime, right? And then the coefficient is y square, y, y prime over m. And then you see that after electrobic symmetry back in both, both sector, so we call v the web of this and f the web of prime, what we get is uh, a mass term that is proportional to vf, and then you cover, you cover prime over m. And then you, uh, you can imagine in the z2 symmetric, symmetric case, basically v goes to f, and y goes to, y prime goes to y, so you, you get the same formula of before. But now, the right-handed neutrino is the, conjugate, con uh, yeah, the, the charge conjugate of the left-handed in the mirror sector. And now you can also derive a bound on the CP parameter on this epsilon one, because now we, we, we said that we are in a hierarchical <coughs> spectrum, so M1 is responsible for, for left -handed. You can derive this, uh, the bound on this, uh, analogous to debison Ibarra bound, but here instead of before, instead of before was three over V square, now we have one over VF. So basically three over V is replaced one over F. And if you see that, uh, yes, no, if F is bigger than V, then uh, it's, it's worse, actually, right? Let's see. Yeah. One question. Different from that. Yes. Then the advantage transition in the mirror sector, you have a different phase transition in the, the standard model. Standard model sector, those two scales are different. That's really and, and at the same time, I coupled those two sectors because I broke the Z2, just like you showed. So, is it, I guess this is assuming implicitly that the two phase transitions don't affect each other and that they yes. don't have any washout in yeah, this is what the other direction. Yeah, that's what we are, yes, but we are, we are assuming. So, we didn't went into this detail because we don't want to so that do some model building yeah one has to yeah one has to study if there is some there are some effects and it's possible to have this condition but yes implicitly we this is what they, they are not affected by by each other yes yeah. so this is what no I, so far i don't exp i don't say nothing right so far i don't i don't say nothing then you have to say when you want to do model building then you have to choose an f right so far, I, 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 I don't say nothing about this. Yeah, but you, you will get some predictions from this, and they will depend on F. No? I mean. Yes, at some point, uh, yes. I, we, we will choose F, I don't know, 600 GV, something like this. So, 1 TV, something like this. So, question, can F be smaller than V? In, yeah, in principle, but... Uh, But then, but then it will enhance the evaluation. Right? But then, in principle, yes. For for from this point of view, yes. But then, then you have to face. Uh, so then you have to start to do model building to see if your model is uh, is consistent with all the cosmological bounds. If f is smaller than v, so if f is smaller than v, my impression is that. Uh, 
So you have too many light guys around uh, that can screw up somehow the delta n effective or something like this. Or you can have uh, yes, or you can have uh, uh, asymmetric. Re usually, people talk about asymmetric reheating of the two sectors. Maybe you, yes, maybe you can have it. Then asymmetric reheating of the two sector. Yeah, this is a way out. Yes, people talk. Yes, or you. So what do you? The two sectors are communicated by the flower coupling. Yeah. So maybe at some. But. High order in loop. I don't know. Maybe we can make them as we. Yeah, yeah, they will, they will see each other. Yeah. Okay, all these, yes, all these uh, questions, yes, are related to so proper the model building. The opposite you direction, you're, you're actually decreasing the amount of CPU that is generated, right? Yes, basically, yeah, this is what, if V is bigger, then yes. This it goes, it goes, yeah, that's what it, <laughs> that's what it is. So it's not advantages. Uh, it's not advantages. That's why, okay. So we we tried. The same equation you got, no? Just replacing F, B, one B by an F, no? Yes, yeah, this is what we got in the standard leptodenesis, the same. Yeah, epsilon one has the same expression as before, just uh, instead of one over B squared, it's one over yeah. F. Okay, it's also a factor of three. Yeah. So then, okay, but anyway, yes, we, we studied this, uh, this leptogenesis uh, mechanism. I constructed the Boltzmann equation, and by considering charge asymmetries, uh, basically, so we defined by y of q, like the charge times y, charge of x, sum over all x, so the q charge of x, sum over all x, so the, the q charge of all particles times y of x minus y of x bar, particles minus antiparticles, so this is what we call charge asymmetry, normalized charge asymmetry, so number density over entropy density. And we studied the evolution of this, so y delta, alpha and y delta prime alpha. As I said, delta usually people call B minus L, so delta alpha is B over three minus L alpha in the standard model sector, and delta alpha prime is B prime third minus L prime alpha in the mirror sector. And also y of delta and I, basically of the heavy, so number of, uh, right, the neutrinos minus number of uh, of every Dirac n minus every uh, n bar, the number of every n bar. So, so the conservation of b minus b prime minus l tot implies that if we sum over alpha this asymmetry in y delta alpha minus sum over alpha of the asymmetry in y minus delta prime alpha minus the asymmetry in delta n. The conservation is this is in principle this is constant, but okay we our we fix it to be zero from the beginning so this is uh, the relation we get and then after all n i and i bar decay so this goes to zero and then we have the sum over alpha of y delta alpha is equal to the sum over alpha of y of y delta prime alpha so y that we call y delta and y delta prime this so y delta is equal to y delta prime. The symmetry, after all n are decay, the symmetry in this and the symmetry in this is to be equal. If, so this for sure at the end, when we, so all decays, we solve, we reach the end, and then we have the two set, sector are decoupled, and then this is, this is, this is only imposed by the global uh, charge conservation. If instead we have also z to symmetry, so everything is equal, this is also equal along the flow of, of when you solve the, the Boltzmann equation at each time or at each temperature. So then we have two, two, two cases. So the unflavored case, so there is some temperature that they call T bar for which, 
for T bigger than T, all lepton nucleophile couplings, for example, are out of equilibrium. So different flavors cannot be distinguishable. So you have to sum over all flavors. So basically, in that case, you will use uh, you write down a Boltzmann equation where you use this uh, unflavored CP parameter epsilon one that is summed over all, all flavor. But then people have studied leptogenesis also flavored case that is something that we also a bit uh, investigate here. For for T smaller than some T bar, the lepton nucleophile coupling some lepton nucleophile coupling start to become uh, in equilibrium. So different flavors are distinguish distinguishable in uh, in our thermal bath. No, so and then. Uh, and then we can uh, write a flavor specific evolution of the symmetry. So the, the Boltzmann equation uh, are, are a bit different. And, uh, are, uh, and then this temperature for the standard model, standard model lepton, this temperature is around 10 to the 11, 10 to the 12 GV, just to have an idea. Uh, then these are, these are the Boltzmann equation in the, for the unflavored case. So we suppose that all flavors, lepton flavors are out of equilibrium. And uh, then, so we write the evolution for the symmetry in Ni plus Ni bar, as they call sum over N1, sorry, N1 plus N1 bar, the asymmetry in Y delta and asymmetry in Y delta prime. So th this equation depends on some parameter, epsilon one that we computed before, P1, that is the branching ratio of N1 into L phi divided by its total decay width. And then on some C and C prime numbers that are usually smaller than zero, that are related on how this asymmetry is distributed uh, into other particles. So this is, this is a form of Boltzmann equation where you have this other, like for example, here is, is the X effect. So even if the X does not carry uh, B minus L, that are basically the, the, char the symmetry in the charges that we are considering. But since it has a U1, so uh, U1 can be, be rewritten in terms of B minus L. Uh, okay, it's a U1 hypercell. Okay, this is a, a way to, to write down this Boltzmann equation. That is was developed by Shang uh, et al. So here we consider it just uh, decay and inverse decay. We don't consider scattering. So this is an approximation. Okay, this are some approximation and I'm writing down this Boltzmann equation. Uh, so and then you see that it depends on, also on that K1 parameter that is gamma over H. Basically, if you divide everything by by H, that is on the left hand side, right? You have gamma, that is, is quantity, gamma over H, so it depends on also on that K1, that, the dual shout effect. So we solve this Boltzmann equation by, so we, uh, we have some freedom in fixing epsilon one, P1, and also this K1, basically gamma N over H, uh, at the mass of that, uh, of, of, of N1. And so we solve this equation by varying P1, because P1, if P1 is equal to one half, you see P1 is equal to one half, and also C equals C prime, then we are in, uh, in the Z2 symmetric case. So exactly this. And then this Y delta will be equal to Y delta prime along the flow at, at each time. Otherwise, only at the end, when this, all these end decays. So we also do something else. We parameterize y delta and y delta prime uh, as a function of like the two epsilon eta, where eta is efficiency, some y equilibrium of reference. So in order, this epsilon one drops out from the Boltzmann equation. So in the end, we don't have to give specific value of epsilon one. But that, so the efficiency is really only depends on this uh, gamma and H, so gamma over H, this K1 factor. So then the final baryon asymmetries, so we have uh, in the end the final asymmetry, as I said, is Y delta is equal to Y delta prime. Then the final baryon asymmetry, YB is some K times Y delta, and YB prime is some K prime Y delta prime. So K and K 
K prime are model dependent, so okay, this we are entering model building, okay. Uh, order one, I don't know, parameter. And then, uh, so the combining YB observed with the bound on epsilon one, we have that M1 in order to have, so this is basically, uh, we use the bound we derived before and we combine uh, with expression of, that we give, we're giving here. So M1 is 10 to the 10 over efficiency. So slightly worse than what we saw before for the, yeah, because, but also because epsilon one is likely, yeah, depending on F, if F, we, we make it, this is F, think of 500 GV. So if F is bigger, we, we thought, okay, there is some, this is a bit worse. And also this here is reflected in this formula because before for user leptogenesis it was uh, uh, 10 to the, I can't remember, 10 to the eight over eta, 10 to the nine, no? Yeah, it's 10 to the 10, it's slightly worse, slightly worse. Sorry, the, uh, for the, for the, for the prime, you also generate some uh, baryon symmetry for, for the... Yes, so then what to do with that baryon symmetry? But then you, you don't have any bounds of that, right? No, we don't have... But maybe this is dark matter. But okay. And you expect this of, of the same order of this. These are equal if k prime more or less equal to k, then we have some asymmetry in B. Suppose the, nu the nucleon is the... The nucleon prime is the dark matter. Then you need a mass of order five times the proton, something like this, right? To have. Yes, but yes, we don't have any. Because the only measured thing is this, is this in our sector. 10 to the order 10 to the minus 9, this baryon asymmetry observed. So here we plot, so we follow what people do in leptogenesis, plot efficiency as a function of a K1. And for different values of P1, so a P1 0.5 is a Z2 symmetric case, but then we allow for Z2 <coughs> symmetry break in 0 0.9 or 0 0.9099. So in this course for, this is for the zero abundance, always this, this shape is always, that we saw also before, it's for the zero aband initial abundance. So we have, at the, at the beginning, we have no n, no, n, no big ends. And here we have a thermal abundance of n. So the, the course, basically, they shift towards the right. So you can have, basically, successful leptogenesis uh, with a bigger washout factor, K1. But then why? Why? Because if we go back, uh, then, uh, so these are the washout terms, basically. These are the washout terms. So there is also a C that is smaller than one. Then there is also this, <coughs> then that, that is smaller than one. So the, actually, the effective washout factor is, uh, is of order one, but this, uh, because the, fact, the washout factor defined is gamma over H. But then this is multiplied by C and P. So this make an effective washout factor, so, so you can have this gamma over H bigger because these are smaller than one in order to have uh, the same result. So this allows, if you want to, <coughs> to have um, a bigger uh, washout factor. And then, okay, but the shape is, is the same. Can you remind me what C is, right? Yeah. So C, so you have to see, so C and C prime are some coefficients that um, are related on how this B minus L asymmetry is distributed into the thermal bath through the X, X interaction. You can compute them. You can compute them. So the paper of Shang, yes, I don't have the reference written here, but they, they studied this and they, they studied to properly take into account those kind of effects that people some, sometimes uh, neglect. <coughs> yes, this is a, a way. Yes, these terms are always washout factors because they are negative C is negative, C prime is negative, proportional to the asymmetry itself, no? tend to wash out. It's negative and proportional, so it's a wash, wash out fact. Then as I said, so suppose, uh, we know that uh, dark matter is all, uh, around five times its energy uh, density bigger than uh, ordinary matter, visible matter, so assuming the dark matter to be the binor nucleon, then we have 
that the mass of the mirror nucleon should be roughly five times the, the mass of the ordinary nucleon, if you want this to have that matter. So people have studied also this. This is not a symmetric dark matter model, basically. No? And then, OK, uh, then uh, the flavor specific case. I don't know how much time uh, I have. Uh, OK. The flavor specific case, uh, now we have to consider this epsilon i alpha, epsilon i alpha prime. So we have these additional terms. And then we can assume that y prime, some y primes are bigger, uh, y primes are much, much bigger than y. And then epsilon i goes like uh, uh, this, this factor here, sorry, this factor here goes like y to the four divided by y prime square, because y prime square comes from here. So, and this b second factor goes like y square. And here is instead epsilon prime i alpha. This first piece goes like y prime square. So it's enhanced with respect to this. And this. Oh, the other two are the same because as we realized before that they give the same contribution. Then the term A in this uh, parameterization of the epsilon, the CP variety parameters, this in epsilon prime is enhanced by this, by this factor, y prime square over y, y square, that is of order of P branching relation to standard model particle to the, to the minus. Then we do a specific, basically what we did, we just consider a specific example. So we consider some uh, P1e, mu and tau, and the primes with some values. So we consider this, uh, this is bigger. We have one direction that this is much bigger than the other. These are somehow democratical in, in this standard model sector. This is bigger. So when you sum this, all these six have to give you one because it's the total decay uh, branching ratio, sorry. Now the branching ratio of decaying all particles, so basically there's one. And then we play with epsilons, also in this case. And uh, uh, we see that when, when, we sum, when we sum this epsilon, it gives you minus one. And also when we sum this epsilon, it gives minus one because the sum has to be equal. That's what we, we derived before. Then, okay, we solve the Boltzmann equation. In this case, we don't plot uh, efficiency because, yeah, otherwise you have to go to see the efficiency in each flavor. So we go directly to, to plot the final baryon uh, symmetry that we get. Assuming something, assuming m 10 to the 8, f 500 GV, the sum of neutrino mass is 0 0.1, and this epsilon prime is much bigger than epsilon uh, in this, of the standard model that we, I showed before with those numbers. And we saw that for the zero initial abandon is the, is the red, and we need uh, for k of order 50, we get the correct uh, baryon asymmetry. And for the thermal, with k of order uh, between 10 and 20. You know. OK, so in this case, we lower a bit the scale, consider this flavor effect. This uh, K1 is the washout factor? Yeah, yes, it's the, washout, it's, it's the washout factor, yeah. Yes, because, uh, yeah, because, um, as, as I said, uh, depending on, yeah, the, yeah, this is a, and a washout factor, the standard definition like uh, gamma over h. But then in the Boltzmann equation, the way I've written, there are some other coefficients in front that when you multiply, can, can be 0 0.1, for example. So, so instead of 20, is 2. I don't know, the, the effective washout factor you, you get, no? And so then also when you sum the, when you, for example, for the zero, zero initial abundance, you, you see that the, the, the dependence is like this goes and goes down. So you say, but naively say, this is very small washout factor, right? And why is so, so small deficiency, right? 
but because so in that case you need not too small for zero initial you need not too small washout factor uh, if it is too big then it washes up this then it, this goes and then it goes down then uh, then uh, if it's too big also it goes down there is some of a sweet spot in the middle that you think that before we saw in the standard lab design is of order between one and ten or something uh, here since we added this uh, the Boltzmann equation is is a bit different then we add this we have added this coefficient the effective washout factor uh, is is smaller than, 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 than this value but this is the, the, the standard definition so and then you can think a sweet, uh, so a sweet spot between uh, of order one washout factor, effective washout factor, but this is not the effective one. Just a question. So this is washout factor is computed from temperature, right? Uh, it could be coupling temperature or what? So this K is at the, the mass, temperature request of the mass of M1. K of, of so temperature equals the mass. The mass of, of one. So that's why it's called K1. One, one, yeah. Okay, so in this case, the tangent scale can be lowered by few order of magnitude. Uh, okay, flavor effects are imp important in the whip washout. So this, you know, the sufficient variance can be generated for K115 or 55, respectively, for thermal and zero. But you can compute K1, right? Excuse me? You, you can compute K1 from yeah, now we get, now we 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 fix it. So because we have enough free parameters, so since you think all these Yukawas that we have, we can adjust and the mass M1, right? We can adjust those to so basically K1 becomes a free parameter that we can adjust like epsilon. So we have enough freedom to have to fix epsilon because you think how many Yukawas we have, right? Uh, to fix K1 epsilon is free parameter and see and see what we get. Okay, and then, okay, so basically, we lower a bit the scale of the tangent by few order of magnitude. So the model is symmetric under the exchange of y and y prime. And but we can also achieve the same enhancement by having y much bigger than y prime. Uh, this brings me to my conclusion. So the, in this model, so assumes the distance of a mirror world with a global lepton number asymmetry, symmetry. The Dirac system, we have a Dirac system mechanism, generate small Dirac masses for some model neutrino, which implies the absence of neutrino less double beta decay. After leptogenesis occur, the symmetry of the theory enforced B minus L equal B prime minus L prime. And the final baryon, a mirror baryon asymmetry related by an order one coefficient, which depends on the data of the model. So then if mirror baryons are asymmetric dark matter, then the model provides an elegant explanation of why dark matter a similar energy density with, with the standard model baryons. And then flavor effects plus Z to breaking allow to achieve an enhancement production of asymmetry by few order of magnitude compared to the Z2 symmetric and unflavored case. So we, and then some ongoing work, we go back to the general neutrino Lagrangian. Then when we, no, when we have general, uh, uh, <coughs> So we have the right and the neutrinos. And now I'm using uh, a two-spinner uh, component uh, notation. So we have the right and the neutrino in our sector and the neutrino in the mirror sector. We, we write down what I showed before the general. And if we integrate out these guys, we get this L effect so for the neutrinos. So we have Majorana neutrinos. So these are the form of the of, of the mass matrix for for the for the neutrinos, where the right-handed neutrinos are the left of the mirror of the mirror world, and then the idea is to to, to take a small lepton number break in so small Majorana mass compared to Dirac mass, a small Yukawa prime also because those because before we see that this and this sorry this uh, sorry this and this is what we had before. We have a conservation lepton number, but then we can also play, we can couple this to that and this to that, and then we break lepton number. So we, but we, we want to study in this small lepton breaking, we expect to have pseudo Dirac neutrinos. So the neutrinos are Majorana, but their mass is splitted by 
that this M, your, uh, this mass expected to be Dirac mass plus or minus mn, with mn is much smaller than md. And the idea is to try to have some resonant leptogenesis, basically to lower further down the scale of the leptogenesis, and maybe to have some applications, for example, for um, twin X model, because twin X model, since we have, uh, so in this case we have, uh, is an effective theory, right, with the cutoff, that the cutoff is not 10 to the <laughs> 11, so it's hard to implement this realistically does. And maybe if you can lower down the scale of leptogenesis, uh, because now this, they become, they become almost degenerate, so we have, so when they are almost degenerate, they have neutrinos, you can have, uh, you, can, you can exploit the resonant uh, mechanism to announce the leptogenesis, because the form of epsilon, you remember, as is basically, and there are some denominator one minus x x k, which is m k square minus m i square m i m i square. So if these two are almost degenerate, this is uh, close to one. So you can get an announcement since it is the denominator. But this is an, an ongoing work. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is yeah. This is. <laughs> And this is the current situation. And <laughs> Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you all very much. <laughs> more questions? One question is very naive. You have, you generate the P asymmetry and the P prime asymmetry. And are you assuming that uh, your prime sector is your dark matter? You can you can assume yes you can assume this right so it's yes but it is, so this is also we are going to get this as dark matter the right value tends to be negative then you need the mass of the then you need the mass of the so suppose then you say okay suppose we have the same asymmetry in B prime of the same order of the asymmetry in B then to have the same the, the, the correct radical density you need the mass of the New, the, the, uh, the nucleon prime to be five times, five times the mass of the of our new, of the solar model nucleon, right? Because if the, the if the if the asymmetries are the same, then you need the mass of the. But, but as soon as I break the symmetry. Then you need to break. Then you need. Then. Doesn't this mean that the B prime is not stable in K plus for the standard model? And it's something it's, it's modifying the baryon asymmetry. Uh, so is the, how is the decaying the prime to the standard model? Well, the, the, the only thing which stabilizes it, the dark sector, is the, the zip diminution. So no, the zip. The, and the B prime, or is it the No, because the baryon is the lightest. To, what, what, the proton is stable because it's the lightest ba baryon, right? Yeah. So the other case the baryon prime. is the... Just B prime, B prime, yes, B prime. So now this is true, this break uh, is broken. So what prevents the B prime to be changed? No, because it's. I think the Z2 is not related to the. It's not the, the user. It's not the Z2 that makes things stable. Z2 is just the relating dark, the dark sector to the visible sector. And what it prevents the. Um, what prevents the decay of this dark barrier is just the bio number in this dark sector. The bio number yes, the dark exactly. Sector. So the barium number in this sector. Yeah. Yeah, because after, yeah, after, after when the spiral freezes out, then it's like in this, you have a copy of the standard model, so you have also there that is like here. Now we say B and L are exactly conserved, right? And then yeah, after, if after. If the solar processes are not effect, efficient, then, then. Then what can violate? Uh, the prime, the right? The of the, uh, the is not <coughs> no. 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 The coupling constant has to be the same, right? Or coupling constant. Or the U, it's a, it's a yeah, global the symmetry, so there's, there's no coupling constant. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, well, well, you have a coupling. Yeah, this Z2 is yeah, it's a mirror symmetry that that you can in, interchange the coupling and the particle of each of each sector. This, this 
if the, the, if what they call Z2. Yeah. Maybe maybe the name is misleading. Okay. No, no, uh, no, no, the, uh, called mirror symmetry. People call it okay. They call, they call, they call, they call, mirror, they call mirror symmetry, right? They call it also Z2 symmetry. Okay. Maybe it's misleading because of this. Because people think about Z2 to stabilize particles, right? right. Yeah. But that's not, that's that's not, not the, like stabilizing these particles. Not, it's, it's not this, what they call it. Yeah. It's just varying number of observations. Yes. In both sectors. In both sectors. When, when the scalar was there, they're not uh, active. Yeah, but uh, I have some concerns to, uh, about uh, the, the fact that you are considering two independent systems, no? But uh, at the end, you are coupling. You are coupling both systems by double coupling. In principle, there are other couplings, right? Yeah, you can know, think. I don't know. If and they should be in thermal equilibrium, and then, okay, this will complete, for, will, will change completely the picture. And also at the end, you say that also at the end they should be in thermal equilibrium. So. But in the Boltzmann equation, you should know, right, if they're in thermal equilibrium or not. Yeah, in the Boltzmann equation, we, we assume they have the same, yeah, they have the same temperature. Well, the question I guess Mariano is asking is the following. So you had Boltzmann equations for uh, delta and delta prime yeah. quantities, right? Yeah. The question the is- The temperature is the same, right? Are, but are, are they coupled? They are coupled. They so are if they're coupled, then you have the, you have the effect mm -hmm. there, no? So that's taken into account. It's taken into account. They are coupled, right? Because why yeah, delta is, that is why delta prime, right? Delta prime is delta, so. So they're coupled. Let's take it into account. Yeah, so this, this effect should be there. Then you can say for the. Then you can, yeah. <laughs> then yes, we are coming back to model building and see what uh, what model, what realistic model we would like to to put up. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. So when should be five minutes or so? Ten yes. Minutes, five, five, ten, ten minutes, ten minutes, five minutes. <laughs>